Seriously, Audi? Did you really put the same size intercooler from the A4 on the S4? What the Frio? That's not cool, Audi. It's not cool at all. You're watching Midlife Mods. The OEM intercooler sits right about here, and it's the same size as the A4 intercooler. But a stock A4 is only pulling like 260 horsepower max. But for me right now, after stage one tune, cold air intake, and turbo inlet, I should be sitting at around 400 horsepower. So this A4 intercooler is not gonna cut it, especially not for my upcoming Laguna Seca trip. I'm gonna need to keep things cool lap after lap to avoid heat soak, which is basically diminishing power output over time. But wait, there's more. Today, I'm also tuning to E85 fuel, which is gonna bring this car up to about 500 horsepower. That's way more power and heat than the OEM intercooler can manage. That's why I'm installing the Wagner Competition Intercooler. This high performance intercooler core provides a 134% larger frontal area and 105% more volume compared to the stock mounted intercooler. That's a lot of mass math. That simply translates to cooler temps and sustained power during high performance driving. But wait, there's more and more. With all this increased power, heat isn't the only thing I'll need to manage. I'll also want to get the maximum performance from my transmission, which is why I'm going stage two on my TCU with 034 Motorsport. This will improve shifting performance and speed for casual and track driving in all driving modes. Dynamic Plus tuning also activates AMAX shifting in more gears to ensure the quickest and most efficient shifting strategies while launching. Kickdown in manual mode is also removed. All right guys, enough talk. Let's get this thing installed. I'm back here at Ingolstadt West in Canoga Park with my friend Oliver from Warhammer Motorsports. He's trying out his new, uh, new to him E30 BMW race car. And we're gonna be installing the intercooler here, so let's get started. Wait a second, did we skip a step? Wasn't the intercooler just in the box and now it's already on the S4? Yeah, so you're right. Here's what happened. So putting the intercooler in front of the radiator where the other intercooler was mounted was kind of a team lift two person job. So I set the camera down and I stepped in to help Oliver put the intercooler on the mounts. So I'm sorry, I don't have that step on video, but doesn't it look nice? Or you might be thinking, wait, the intercooler's already in? Yes, look at that stealth black paint. It blends in so well, you can hardly even see that it's installed. Looks amazing if you ask me. Look at the size of that intercooler compared to the OEM one. It's massive, it takes up the whole grill. This is definitely gonna help keep my temps under control. Sorry, OEM intercooler. 
Okay, let's get back to the vibe music and watch Oliver at work. install a Wagner competition intercooler. Nice work, Oliver. Thank you, you're a great assistant. <laughs> now it's tune time. We're switching over from 91 octane to E85, so I have to let the gas tank empty, fill up with E85, then flash it over to the E85 tune. Now you're supposed to use an ethanol content sensor to do this, but I'm not. So don't do as I do. Do as they say on 034 Motorsports website if you want to be extra safe. What I'm going to do is I'm going to let the tank run to empty. I'm at about um, five miles of range right now. I'm just going to let it empty until I get to zero or a little bit past that. I might even let the car just stall out. And then I'm going to fill it up with E85 and let it idle for at least 20 to 30 minutes and make sure that E85 cycles through the engine uh, appropriately before I do the flash. And I think I should be good. <laughs> Fingers crossed, right? I drove around the block a few times and my gas gauge is at zero now. All right, so now we are going to fill it up with E85, let it idle for about 30 minutes, and then reflash it. So I filled it up with about four gallons. That should be enough for this uh, process. So now we're gonna let it idle for about 20 to 30 minutes and let that E85 cycle. So here we go. It's been over 20 minutes now. I've let the car idle. I've driven it around the block a few times. So now it's time to flash the car. That only took like a minute or two. That was really fast. So now we're gonna do the stage two transmission tune. I wanted to go stage two with this transmission to keep up with the added horsepower of this E85 tune. Again, I'm gonna be around 500 horsepower with this tune. Let's do it. And that was it. Okay, so now we're gonna drive it around very carefully. We're gonna baby it, drive it around for at least 30 minutes. Let the fuel get incorporated into the engine, make sure that the tune adapts, the ECU and the TCU kind of, you know, adjust to this new tune. And then we can have some fun and test some zero to 60 times. So now with the intercooler installed, E85 fuel and a stage two TCU tune, the real question is, is it faster now? So far the best zero to 60 time I've had in this car is around 3.8 seconds. Let's see if we can beat that. We have our answer, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, it is in fact faster. 3.5 seconds, zero to 60 time. The launch felt amazing. The transmission felt amazing. You could really feel the difference between the stage one and stage two TCU. And I can absolutely feel the difference with this ethanol E85 fuel that I'm running. Nice work, 034. Thank you for watching Midlife Mods.